glad to be with you tonight. You might notice there's a few changes. There's going to be more changes, but we're going to get this thing done. Uh, I'm Pastor Jeff Lane. This is a live prayer program, and in a few minutes we'll get to prayer. But we're going to have a little prayer over the show first, and then I'm going to preach. Preaching on prayer. What else? And tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about intercession. We're just going to start scratching the surface of it. Um, Maybe one of the greatest prayers that we've been called to do. And probably the most unselfish of all prayers that we're going to um, talk about. Because when you intercede for somebody, you're standing in for their behalf, right? Let's pray. Father, we come before you tonight, Lord, and I come before you. In behalf of, Lord, every listener, every person that would hear this program, and even those, Lord, that will not, but, Lord, what is preached tonight will affect their lives. Many of them will be saved, healed, families put together, Lord, and, Lord, so much more. Father, may your anointing fall tonight. May you give the people understanding, revelation, vision of what your word has to say. May it become, Lord, part of them. May they walk in it and become more like your word each day. Let the faith arise in them, Father. May they realize the power that is in their tongue. And Lord, the glory that you you will show forth through their lives if they would only submit to you. Speak your word. Pray. And Lord, I ask tonight, you do great things that you bring forth, Lord, confirmation of your word. For, Lord, you said you'd bring signs and wonders as confirmation of your word. Have your way, dear Lord. Show them the evidence in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going to start off in Hosea. You think may think, well, 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 wait a minute. Hosea, why Hosea? Well, let me read it. Because I really think that if you're going to be an intercessor, if you're truly going to intercede for somebody, you're going to find that the statement that I'm going to read... Uh, that that God makes through Hosea um, is extremely important. And if you don't have this in your life, I'm not really sure how you're going to have the capability of of stepping in for somebody else. So let's go to Hosea chapter 6, and and let's look at verse just one verse, verse 6. It says, For I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and and acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. So up to that point, point the israelites only knew burnt offerings they only knew sacrifices they knew if they sinned they took a sacrifice but it had changed from knowing god having an acknowledgement of god to um, like many people do today i'm saved i can do whatever i want i don't have to acknowledge god i just you know i just do whatever i want because christ paid the price uh you know eat drink and be merry before we because tomorrow we die and and it's all under the blood and and you know once saved always saved and all of this sort of thing now if you want to believe the once saved always saved doctrine you you got to believe it the way it was taught if once saved, always saved, then you're saved if you quit sinning. But if you don't quit sinning, then you probably were, you were never saved to begin with. So let's shove that aside because I'm just not interested in getting into that argument. Okay? If you don't know more of God's Word than that, and I'm not trying to be insulting, we'll, we'll just save that for another day. All right. So the thing that I want to really dig into here is mercy. The church isn't always merciful. People in their prayer life are not always merciful when they're dealing with other people. God has called us to be merciful and to know Him and let other people, when they see you, you should look like Christ. Christ was the exact representation of God. Uh, he, He looked like God. Everything He said came from God. He told Philip, He says, Philip, what do you mean show us the Father? Don't you know me, Philip? The things that I do are the very things the Father does. When you see me, you see the Father. If you want to know God the Father, if you truly want to know God the Father and understand God the Father, then you need to read the Gospels. I personally recommend that you read the Gospels seven times through. Read them through seven times because something will dawn on you after you've read it that much. Wait a minute. God is a loving, merciful God. He never denied anybody to be healed. He always was there for them. He interceded. He died for them. He gave everything, all of himself for them. 
Now think about this. God created everything for man, created man, put his breath in him, gave him everything. Man falls, and then God turns around and gives him even more. He gives him himself. He gives him his only son. I mean, if that isn't loving, I don't know what is. How could it get any better than that? And instead of walking with God, he walks in, he lives in us. I mean, we've sinned, and he makes it even better. So God is not interested in, in he didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but through Christ that we might be saved. Okay, so Christ came to intercede in our behalf and show mercy. He's not, it isn't about, sacerdotal law, sacrifices, bulls and rams and, and shedding all of this blood. God wants you to know him, acknowledge him. He wants you to know him and he wants to show you his mercy. Now let's, let's just look at it again over in Matthew 9.9. 9. That was Old Testament. So I'm going to go to New Testament. You give equal time here, okay? As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him. Oh, follow me, he told him, and G Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. I'm sorry, there's a, there's a humorous part of this. that I, I, It just cracks me up. But here he's sitting with sinners and he's eating. And when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Now, it's kind of funny. I mean, it's, I, I'm sorry, it's humorous, because Jesus never talked to anybody that wasn't a sinner, because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But these supposed well-meaning church members, if I could put it that way, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the teachers of the law, were so holy that they couldn't even sit down and eat with these, these horrid creatures. They could, I mean, they're sinners. Oh, my goodness. Sinners. And here you're supposed to be a man of God. God desires mercy. He says, listen, go, go, go read the scripture and figure out what God's talking about. You don't know him. You don't acknowledge him because you, if you knew him, you would do like your father does if he were your father. And later on he tells him Satan's our father. He says, but if you knew him, you would understand that, that God desires to show mercy. He, he, Christ didn't come to condemn the world. He came to save the world. He came to intercede with them. And here he is sitting with these everyday Joes, these, these horrid sinners, and he's having a meal with them. Can you imagine something so horrible? I'll tell you what, I've always gotten along with sinners. Be honest with you. I don't expect much because they don't know God. One time my son said I was... Uh, working on a site and um, I was working with a, a, a bunch of, uh, they were homosexuals. And I was talking to them and everything and my son said, and he was horsing around with me, but he says, Dad, you get along with them so well it almost worries me. And I said, son, they're blind. They don't know Jesus Christ. God loves them just, just like us. There's nothing to worry about. They need Jesus, and if they don't see the love of God in us, and we keep casting stones, and we keep throwing stones at them, they're never going to come back to him. They're never going to come to him. They're never going to know him, and why would they want to? So my friends, God's called us to reach out to the sinners. And quite frankly, I don't know one person that God's ever spoke to on the face of the earth that wasn't one. Because God says, you're all sinners. But God desires to show us mercy, not sacrifice. But, but let me show you something. Okay, we're going to look at two incidences of intercession. Two incidences of intercession, okay? Um, let's go to Luke. Hang on. I want to see which one I want to go to. Um, Luke 
Now, let's go to John first. John 1 and verse 8. Listen. Now, Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, and at dawn he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people were gathered around him. And he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman who was caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group. Now, I've always found this peculiar because I'm like, okay, where's the guy? Where's the man? Okay? Got the woman there, but where's the man? A little slanted, isn't it? And said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in, adultery, in an act of adultery. In the law, Moses condemned, or I mean commanded us to stone such a woman. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. You see, Satan is the accuser of the brother, and those in the church, instead of looking for a way to justify, oh, wait a minute, who is it justifies? God the Father. Romans chapter 8. We'll read it in a bit. But they weren't looking for a way to justify her. I'm not saying justify her and saying that her sin was okay and you'll see that in a moment i'm saying to take away her sin because they were teachers of the law pharisees sadducees they were there to intercede in her behalf to get her back on the right path but instead all they want to do is what satan wants to do you sinned the law says you got to die so they're ready to stone this woman but they're trying to trap jesus because they're not interested in mercy they're not interested in redeeming her. God was always trying to redeem. They weren't doing their job as Pharisees, teachers of the law, as the heads of the church, as priests. Priest alone means one who intercedes in behalf of somebody. The one that is a go-between. The negotiator. The arbitrator. The one that does whatever he can so that the other one would not have to suffer the consequences of their actions. So let's read. But Jesus bent down and started right on the ground with his finger. And when they, they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and he said to them, If any one of you is without sin, if any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stopped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard him began to go away one at a time. Now listen to this. The older ones first until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there Jesus straightened up let, let me stop here I, I just want to say I can't help it Jesus is writing on the ground you notice because the older ones left first and then the younger ones I just have my suspicion he was probably writing down maybe a name of one somebody that one of them had an affair with or a specific sin that one of them had done or, or, or write something that would put them in remembrance of, of something in their life. I wonder if he just started off, you know, okay, what about this in your life, Mister, oh, you older gentleman? What about you next and you until all of them were gone? They couldn't stand before him because, listen, who is it that condemns Christ Jesus? But more than that, who is that interceding at the right hand of the Father? His very life brings condemnation. And if you sow condemnation, you're going to reap condemnation. So here they're standing before the, Jesus. And he says, you want to play that game? Here's how we're going to play. And the older ones left first, and the younger ones then left, until only him and this woman is standing there. Now listen. Jesus straightened them and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Listen to Jesus. Listen to this. This is so beautiful and it's so touching because it's exactly what he said. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Neither do I condemn you. But then Jesus said, declares to her, Go now and leave your life of sin. He didn't, ju listen, he didn't justify the sin. He justified the sinner. He, he's taking away the sin. He does not accuse her. But he became sin for us, so he interceded in her behalf. God didn't call us to the world to tell the world they're all sinners. 
I'm pretty sure that most people in the world know they're sinners. I have listened to them before. As a matter of fact, they'll joke sometime with me at the hospital. They'll say, well, you know, I, I am the worst of sinners. And the other day, they all got to talking about it. I thought it was kind of funny because I really hadn't said much. They all got to talking about it. I says, well, I guess we'll all be in hell together. And they were kind of laughing, but they weren't mocking me. They weren't being mean to me. But it was one of those very honest moments. And I, you know, I, I'm looking at them, and I'm just like, don't have to be that way. Didn't need to say much. But your very presence will condemn people at times. Your very presence will make them uncomfortable. We're not here to make them comfortable. People, we're not here to make them comfortable. We're here to, to remind them that they're in need of a Savior like we were in need of a Savior. We're not here to tell them that we're, we're Holy Joes. We're here to tell them that, hey, I'm a, I, I, I'm a sinner like you. I needed a Savior. I'm not perfect. That's why I come to Christ. I'm not a Christian because I'm perfect. I'm a Christian because I'm just the opposite. Or at least I was. And even when I fail now, I still go back to the cross. So he says, listen, leave your life of sin. Go and sin no more. He, didn't, he justifies her, the woman, but he doesn't justify the sin. The sin's got to go. Now, look at this. Turn with me. Let's go backwards now. Let's go back to, to Luke uh, chapter 13. We're looking at, at situations of intercession. I want you to see this. So Jesus interceded in her behalf, and her accusers left. You know what? This isn't going to go the way I, I thought. God just spoke something to me, and I'm going to read it to you in a minute. Let's go to Luke chapter 13. It says, Now there were some present at that time who told Jesus about a Galilean whose blood Pilate had mixed with the sacrifices. I want to make sure I'm in the right place. Yeah. And mixed with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than any of the Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you the truth, no. But unless you repent, you too will also all perish. Or those 18 who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were more guilty than any others living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will be all perish. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in the vineyard. And he went out to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I have been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree, and I haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, Leave it alone for one more year. I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. I don't know how many times I've been at a bedside and seen somebody on a vent and they're dying. And I mean, they, 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 they're, they're going. And I cry out to God and I said, God, give them another year. God, give them a little more time, please. Please give them a little more time, just a little more time that they may be saved. Please raise them up. Don't let them die in this young state. Don't let them die now. But give them a little more time, maybe. Maybe they'll turn from their wicked ways. Now, what does he say about this tree? He says, I'll till around it. I'll take care of it. Do you have a sinner in your family? Do you have someone that don't know Christ? Do you have someone that has never bore fruit for the Father? Let me tell you what. You need to intercede in their behalf and say, Father, give them more time. Pray for those in your family even before they get sick and say, God, give them more time. And in the meantime, begin to talk to them about the word. Begin to, to, to intercede, talk to them, and, and, and you're interceding with the Father on their behalf to have more time, to hold back the powers of darkness from taking their life. Satan wants to kill anyone and destroy anyone he can. He don't want them to have that time. And sometimes you've got to stand in the gap and you've got to make up the hedge. You've got, you, you got to be a wall about them in prayer. And if there's a gap in their, in, in their lives because of the sin in their life, a place where Satan has the right to take their life. Oh, come on now. How many of you know somebody that's a drug addict? 
How many of you know somebody that's an alcoholic or live in a lifestyle that, that their sin leads to death? Then you need to intercede and pray a hedge of protection around them and ask God, give them more time. In the meantime, be telling them about Christ and what Christ did for you. That is intercession in a nutshell. That is intercession. Let me show you something. I wasn't planning on going here, but, but give me a moment because it, it just moved over. The Lord just moved over my soul and just said, you need to, to read this to him. Let me see if I can find it. Um, we're in Zechariah. Let's go to chapter 3. He says, Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right side to accuse him. Now I want you to realize that Joshua was the high priest. He is the, the man that is to intercede in behalf of all the people to take go in once a year into the Holy of Holies with the blood of bulls and rams in behalf of the people for sins that were committed uh, uh, unintentionally. For the back in the Old Testament, there was no sacrifice for sins that had been committed intentionally. Then you cried out for mercy. David did that, okay? So here we have the high priest. Satan is standing there accusing him. Now look. The Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you. Satan, the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem, rebuke you. Is not this man a burning stick snatched from the fire? And Joshua was dressed in filthy clothes as he stood before the angel. And the angel said to those who were standing before him, Take off his filthy clothes. Then he said to Joshua, See, I have taken away your sins. I will put a rich garment on you. This is amazing. This is amazing. The Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you. How could the Lord say to Satan, the Lord rebuke? I want you to think about that. So the Lord God, okay, or the Lord Jesus, doesn't matter which one. And I believe it was the Lord Jesus said, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. For I have taken away his sin. Now Joshua's in filthy clothes. This is supposed to be the holiest of holy men in the whole world and he's standing there in filthy clothes because he's a sinner because we're all sinners and God shows him mercy and he says hey Satan the Lord rebuke you in other words shut up for I have taken away his sin and he puts a rich ornamented robe on him his signet ring on his finger he's one of mine I've snatched him from the flames of hell now, let's read on. I, I just try to... Here, here you have it. Listen. Here you have it. You have God the Father sitting on the throne. He's the judge. You have Joshua, the sinner, standing before him. He's the high priest, but he's a sinner. You have Satan pointing and accusing him. He says, he's mine. He's sinned. He's no good. He's got, to, he's got to go with me into the flames. He's a sinner. He's a sinner. There's no argument as to whether uh, uh, Josh was a sinner. It clearly states that he had on filthy clothes. Jesus, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me, I'm the defense attorney here. And I got news for you. I've taken away his sin. I became sin for him. I became the ultimate sacrifice. I died for this man. He, he said, wait a minute. He hasn't died yet. God calls things that are as though they were not. God, God, God he declares it because when God says something, it's as good as done. Was not Abraham the father of faith? Was he not considered righteous? for his believing and for what he did because he got saved because God said this is going to happen my son will come and redeem them we get saved because he's already done it 
you see, my friends, in the Old Testament, there was no sacrifice for intentional sin except for looking forward to the Redeemer coming to take it away. And if you believed God that he would come, or you look back believing God that he came and has risen from the dead, either way you're saved. Because when God says something, he sees it as though it's done. You remember that because we're going to come back to that in a moment. So he says, take off his filthy clothes. I mean, it, it, it's so beautiful because Christ, it's done, paid for. I did it myself. All of a sudden, the screen of the prosecuting attorney showing all the things that, that Joshua did, it suddenly turns red. The blood falls from the top of the screen and runs down and all you can see is the righteous blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for him. You can no longer see his sin because God had thrown it in the sea of forgetfulness because Christ showed him mercy and interceded in his behalf. Let's read on. See Joshua, I have taken away your sin. I will put a rich garment on you. Then I said, put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him with the angel as the angel stood by. The angel of the Lord gave this charge to Joshua. This is what the Lord Almighty says. If you will walk in my ways and keep my requirements, then you will govern my house and have charge of my courts, and I will give you a place among these standing here. Listen, O high priest Joshua, and your associates seated before you. You are men to symbol, uh, symbolic of things to come. I am going to bring my servant, the branch, that's Jesus, See the stone I have set in front of Joshua. These are the seven eyes of the one stone. What in seven eyes? Wow, I wonder what that is. And I will engrave an inscription on it saying, The Lord Almighty, I will remove the sin of this land in a single day. And that's Christ's death and resurrection. And in that day, each of you will invite his neighbor to sit under his vine and his fig tree, declares the Lord Almighty. So who are the seven eyes, people? The seven eyes always represents the church. If you don't know that, you go to Revelation, and you're going to find out that that is the church. Not only is that the church, but he says something really peculiar here. And you've got to understand what this means. He says that each person will sit under their own vine and fig tree. In other way, me, uh, what that means, that is a saying from back then, your own vine and fig tree, what that means is you will prosper, you will have every good thing, you will prosper in your soul, you will prosper in your health, you will prosper in, in, in your, your, your wealth, in, in every way. You will sit under your own vine and fig tree. You will have peace in your life. And you'll have a wonderful life, an abundant life. That's what that means. So Christ intercedes for us in our behalf. But then he talks about the church, the rock, and he says, the church is going to come and they're going to do the same thing. We have been called to intercede for those that don't know him. They're sinners. But unless we go to them, how will they know they're sinners and how will they be saved? We must go and sin no more. Yes, it's going to make them a little uneasy, uncomfortable. But by, I remember Smith Wigglesworth was on a train. You, you've heard me talk about him, but I got a, 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 a kick out of something he said. He's on this train, and he's uh, um, uh, just went in and he sat down. That's all he did. He sat down. He goes in and he sits down. Yes, I'm looking for a scripture. Uh, and he's sitting there, and this man comes in, and he sits across from him on the train. Now, I know we don't do that much anymore. People don't take trains like they used to. Becky and I, uh, Leah, when she was little, she wanted to go on a train ride. She wanted to experience it, and we took a train ride from, from here up to Maine. All I got to say is trains ain't what they used to be because I read one as a kid and it was very comfortable and nice. This wasn't so nice. But regardless, we took a train ride and people walked around talking to each other. Matter of fact, at one point, here, Aaliyah has, has just always been a, uh, a kid magnet, okay? And pretty soon every kid in two cars have come together in the front of this train and she's got them all coloring and playing together and being real sweet and all the parents are like, this is great. 
I mean, she's just, I mean, it was amazing. And we'd just laugh because she'd always do that. The kids just flocked to Leah, okay? So she's, she's on this train, and everybody's just talking and with one another. It was really nice. So it's, you, if you can kind of picture that, so Smith Wigglesworth is sitting there. He's not saying a word. He's just sitting there waiting to, for the train to take off. And it begins to take off, and this man comes. He sits across from him. Suddenly this man says, You, sir, convict me of my sins. And he fell down, and he says, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Now, how could that be? Except the Spirit of God was so great upon Smith Wigglesworth, it was the Spirit on him. I've actually experienced that. I've had people say, look at me, that just suddenly stare, turn around, look at me, and say, You're a Christian. And they would feel conviction and they'd want to get right with God. It wasn't anything I did. It wasn't because I was so holy and so righteous or, or any of these things. It was because of the mercy that God had shown me and the Spirit of God on my life. And you become a natural intercessor because of the very presence of God in your life. Long story short, pretty soon everybody in that car, they started a revival and everybody in that train car got saved. They all gave their heart to Jesus. And Smith hadn't even spoken a word to start with. Now, aren't you looking forward to the day that you had so much of the Spirit of God upon you that your very presence convicts them to the point they want to ask for forgiveness? Because they feel not just the conviction. Listen, I'm not talking about condemnation. Conviction is when you become aware of your sins because of love and mercy. Condemnation is because Satan is the accuser of the brother. That's of the devil. But when you bring conviction in your life because you have mercy and love, that's what changes the hearts of people. Now, I want you to turn with me to Romans chapter 8. Yeah, we're back in Romans chapter 8. We sure are. Let's look at verse 26 to start with. I'm about, we're, we're going to wrap this up here. Didn't go the way I was going to go at first, but this is what God has directed me. You want to be an intercessor? You listen. Now, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. It actually says in the Greek, if I can quote it, I'm going to do the best I can, with words that others cannot understand. And he who, sac listen, he who searches the heart knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saint. The Spirit, I'm sorry, for the saints in accordance with God's will. So do you remember over in Genesis where God said to uh, Cain, it says, uh, Cain, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. The Spirit now intercedes for us in our life. And God speaks to us and he says to us, listen, you got sin in your life. You got things in your life. And I and, and he intercedes and he prays through us in accordance with God's will that we would what? Not succumb to sin. But he also intercedes through us for others. Now let me show you. Let, let, I hope you can remember something I said earlier, but I'm going to go to this. So he intercedes for us in accordance with God's will, and it says. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him and who have been called according to His purpose. Okay, I hear people quote it this way. We know that God works for the good of all those. Are, are, for, for, we know that God works for the good of everyone or, 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 or all people. That's not what it says. It's, he works for the good of those who love Him and who have been called according to His purpose. So they're called according to His purpose because all are called, but few are chosen. But I'm not going to look at that. What I want you to see is those who love Him. What qualifies if we love Christ? What qualifies if we love God? How do we know? What evidence is there in our life that we know that we love Him? You're going to have to go over to 1 John, read the book, and over and over it says, If you love Him, you will obey Him. What did Christ say? If you love me, you will obey me. So we walk in His Word and we obey His Word. We have stopped. We have repented. We stop our sinning and we start obeying Him. So if we love Him, we obey Him. Okay? So He works for the good of those who love Him. So that Christ prays, he, the Spirit intercedes for those who love Him 
according to God's purpose. Now, keep reading. And those God foreknew, he also predestined to conform to the likeness of his Son. Because, uh, this is my words, I'm paraphrasing here, because the Son is a radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of His being, sustaining all things by His powerful Word. If you see the Son, is, is Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So if you conform to the likeness of His Son, you are conforming to the likeness of God the Father. This, listen, let me read it again. Because I want you to grab this. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to conform to the likeness of his Son. So in other words, God says himself, I am going to conform you to my likeness. Because in the beginning we were created in his likeness. We fell out of his likeness. Christ is bringing us back to his likeness. Because he's ever, what? Well, let's read on. Now listen that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. He did not justify what they were doing. He justified the purpose by taking away their sin. He didn't justify them, their sin. He justified the person because he took away the sin. But then it ends with, he also glorified. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Glorified. Let me think about this a moment before we get into more intercession. So here we have Joshua, the high priest. He's standing before God himself and before Christ and before Satan and other heavenly hosts. He's standing before him and he does what? Christ, he removes the filthy rags, the clothing, and he puts on a royal robe. He gives him the he glorifies him with his what mantle elijah went across hit the river went across elisha was following he says what do you want elisha i want a double portion of your spirit the spirit that's upon you he says if you keep your eyes upon me you'll have it otherwise not and he's taken into heaven chariots of fire come down and they take elijah he don't have his eyes on the chariots of fire. He has his eyes on Elijah because he knows what he wants. And as Elijah goes into heaven, he looks. He's staring up there. And the mantle, the robe of Elijah, begins to slowly drift down from heaven. It drifts and it goes back and forth. It must have seemed like an eternity watching that thing come down. And Elisha reached down and he picked it up. And he wraps it around himself because God brings the glory. He glorifies him that day. Jesus died on a cross. He was beaten. He was whipped. He was doing all of this because he had become sin for us. It says he became sin for us and he became the curse for us. And he was impaled on a cross and nails in his hands and in his feet, a spear in his side and a crown of thorns and his face was beaten beyond recognition and his back was just, just his whole body was just the flesh, the ribbons of flesh had been ripped off as that cat of nine tails with the, the, the bones that said they put sharpened bones in it, flint, and they whipped his back. It just the, the, it stuck in his his those his own bones and he he they, they pull it out and as they did it just the ribbons of flesh would go come off. I mean, it's, you said, Pastor, you you're a little bit descriptive. Yeah, I am a little descriptive because Christ showed me Himself on the cross once. It wasn't a pretty sight. I watched His blood dripped from Him, His side running down his face his, his, he, he didn't even look human he was so beat up he became sin for us and, and that sin that, that died he died but then he rose from the dead more than 500 people saw him at one time the apostles and, and disciples and different people saw him and Mary and they saw him, and these people who had once had been horrible sinners, they saw him, and, and finally they're standing with him. And the day he's to, to ascend into heaven, and he says something to him. He says, go into Jerusalem and tarry. Go into Jerusalem and tarry. 
till you are renewed with power from on high. And then he, he was lifted into the sky. And the men were standing there just staring at the sky like Elisha. They went back. And the angel says, what are you doing here? Go and do what he told you to do. They go into Jerusalem and pray. But what they didn't know is his mantle was falling because Jesus didn't do one miracle. Jesus didn't do anything in ministry until he was baptized with water and then he was baptized in the Holy Ghost because it says that the Holy Spirit came down and remained upon him. He immediately went into the desert or the wilderness and then he went back in the city in the power and the might of the Holy Spirit. He had the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome sin. You want to overcome Satan, you got to overcome sin. So as they prayed, Christ's mantle began to fall. The Holy Spirit began to drift down to the ground. And then God, Christ glorified them. He, he wraps that, his, his mantle around them, the Holy Spirit. And they get a deposit guaranteeing greater things to come. And they begin their journey of intercession for the entire world. Dying daily. Dying and being martyrs so that others might be saved. He glorified them with his Holy Spirit. He glorified their flesh with a deposit of his Holy Spirit. How amazing. Let's read the rest of this. Not to the end. Not Just a few more verses. We're almost there. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, how will he not along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Oh, praise God, he sent his son to justify us. You know, how do you win in court when the judge has justified you? Cards are kind of stacked in your favor, aren't they? The defense attorney. Who is he who condemns? Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or the sword? It's nothing. Nothing, my friends. But the rapture and death itself should separate you from interceding for the sinners. You should be praying for them. You should be seeking God for them. You should be crying out in their behalf that God would give them at least one more year. You should be tilling, preaching, telling them about Christ, interceding in their behalf because God has put His Holy Spirit upon you to pray through you to intercede God's will for their lives that they might be saved. Why do you think He gives you that heavenly prayer language? So that you can pray. Pick up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray God's words in their lives and pray for their salvation. Intercede until they come. That is intercession. That is an intercessor. One who desires to show mercy with love and compassion that they might come in and be saved from whatever they need saving from. From whatever they need saving from. I don't care if they're the worst of sinners. I don't care how bad they are. God says go to them. Go to them. You heard me talk about a while back that, that missionary goes over to those two cannibal tribes in Africa. Right? I mean, they eat people. They kill them and they eat them. They suck their... They, they put a hole in their head, they take their brains out, and they eat them. Not exactly a good meal to me. And they were killing these missionaries and doing the same to them. But they were willing to give their lives because Christ gave his life for them. I've had Christians at the hospital 
and they've lost a loved one, a, a, a son or a daughter. Sometimes I have to go to them and I have to talk to them about them donating their organs. And almost every time I say to them, when I find out they're Christian, says, you know, Christ gave his entire body for you. What if your son or your daughter or your father or mother or whoever it is, what if they gave their liver or maybe their heart to somebody and that person was a sinner? But they had a little more time and they got saved. Wouldn't it be worth it? I push organ donation because I, I see that as just one more way. Even if we're gone, we can still give somebody some hope. I'm telling you that because no matter what it is, give it to the Lord. You Listen, same thing. I told somebody, I, I had Christian. Well, I'm, I'm not giving blood. I'm a Christian. I look at it like, what? I'm a Christian. You're not supposed to give blood. I says, really? Christ gave his blood for you every drop. Can't you give a pint for them? Can't you give your life for them? Because if you don't, they might not be saved. If you do not intercede in their behalf, if you do not pray through, if you do not get a hold of heaven. Now you can say, okay, sirrah, sirrah, whatever will be, will be, but that's not what Scripture teaches. Either you do it or you don't. But if you don't, don't do it out of obligation. But become like the Father, become like the Son, and have so much love and compassion and mercy in you. You see, I want to read that scripture one more time. Where is it, Lord? Help me find it. Hosea 6.6. 6. This is a scripture Christ said. We'll learn what it means. What does it say? For I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. You see, God just wants to know you. And he wants you to lead others to know him. And he don't want you to go accusing the brethren. He wants you to go convicting the brethren out of love through his Holy Spirit that they might know him through you because God has glorified you with his love and his Holy Spirit. Let's pray, and then let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. And Lord, it is a sweet word, a sweet word of love, mercy, and compassion. May it touch hearts tonight. May they cry out to you and say, I want to be like that. Make me like you, Father. Make me like your son. I want to be an intercessor no matter what the cost. I want to lead others to you. I want to please you, my Father. I desire to please you with all my heart, soul, and being. For I know that when I love on the least of these, Lord, I'm loving on you. Make us intercessors, Lord. Make us like you, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Maybe I'll preach the other half of that tomorrow night. The Lord just took me in a totally different direction funny how he does that look if you want prayer tonight you want me to pray for you i'm not here to condemn you you know i used to get irritated because i tell somebody you know i, I got a cold oh don't say that I'm a jerk and i look at him, what do you mean <gasps> don't claim that on yourself wasn't claiming anything on myself i already got the cold god didn't say to deny listen you can't deny the truth. The truth was I had a cold. I deny the right of it being there. I'm not here to condemn you because you have a cold or, or you got the flu or cancer or anything else. It doesn't mean Christ loves you any less. On the contrary, Christ has called us all to come before his throne, boldly before his throne in each other's behalf, to lift each other up. What does he say in Hebrews? He says, assemble yourselves together even more so as the day of the Lord approaches. But it also says right there to come boldly before his throne. So let's come boldly before the throne of God in each other's behalf. I'm not here to throw a stone at you. I'm not here to condemn you. If you have sin in your life, it's time to go and sin no more. But I'm here to pray for you. 
and lift you up. I remember t twice in my life I've had ladies come up to me and they didn't want to tell me what was wrong. I said, just tell me what it is. And both of them had venereal disease. They had sinned. I asked them, I said, did you repent? They said, yes, I did. One couldn't tell her husband. I said, let's pray. We prayed. And God took, healed both of them. Healed both of them of the incurable disease. He didn't tell me, well, they're sinners. Let's throw some stones at them, Jeff. He gave them mercy. He healed them. And he gave them new lives. And you better believe they quit sinning. And they said, I ain't doing that again. Praise God. So I'm not here to throw stones at you no matter what you have. I'm here to pray with you that you be healed. Some of you need to call in tonight. We need to pray because you're having a hard time being an intercessor. You're so busy focusing on your own life and yourself, you're not focusing on reaching others for Christ. And maybe some of you, you've been a little bit on the side of uh, condemning and accusing. You're right, I do need to do that. So, let's pray. No matter what it is, I'm guilty of it. When I was younger, I was guilty of it. I was guilty of, uh, uh, of doing Satan's work, accusing others. I wish I could say I didn't, but I did. I had to ask for forgiveness. Okay, you want prayer, you call me at 727-223-4850. But let's say you got something going on in your life, like maybe what those ladies had. You've, you've sinned, and, and I'm telling you, maybe it don't need to be on the air. I understand that. There are times when you just don't, listen, you call. I don't care what it is. Male or female, you've committed adultery, you've done something, but you've got a problem in that area. You call Catherine off the air. 727-223-4850. Three, three, listen carefully. 727 two two three three zero zero six you call her she's off the air you're not going to be off the air she will pray with you don't just sit there get it out of your life get it taken care of i don't care if it's venereal disease i don't care what it is i, I don't care how sensitive it is or maybe you just don't want to be on there you're just uncomfortable i understand that i get that sometimes it just it's just hard for people to 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 for other people to hear what they need. I don't think uh, uh, Aunt Alice would mind me saying, she has a hard time coming on the air. And here this woman is a giver, 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 does, 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 does for the Lord, and, and she just has a hard time being on the air. That's okay, she's shy, big deal. Okay, big deal. I. The woman's got a holy boldness. She just don't like to be on the air. I get it. She's done it before. Took a lot of courage for her. I got another lady, and, and I'm just going to call her Kim. Bold as a lion, but she just has a hard time coming on the air. That's okay. I'm going to take you right where you're at. So call Kath if you're one of those people. 727-223- Four nine nine four. Now, all of our numbers start with seven two seven two two three. So, all you need to remember is, if you want to call her, uh, um, I gave the wrong number. It's four nine nine four. That is the right number. Four nine nine four. You want to talk to Kath? Four nine nine four. Seven two seven two two three. Four nine nine four. A while ago, I gave my do the donation number. I'm sorry. If you want to donate, okay. Oh, we got a $250 challenge again tonight. Our sister said, she says, I am, she's believing God for great miracles for us to go on this other network. And she's, she's given 
this is be our third night, two hundred and fifty dollars, and I want to give God the glory and praise Him. We we had a five hundred dollar challenge. We had two two fifty challenges in the last two days, and we have exceeded. Uh, we went a little over, but we met all the challenges. It was a little bit after we got off the program last night. So I praise God. God is already sending in the money to do something greater and bigger. And we haven't even got on the TV yet. We're going to be on the TV when? May 1st. What happens May 1st? You're not going to find me here from 10 to 12 anymore. You will find us, and you still can find us on Facebook. You can still find us on YouTube. You will find and in on The Walk TV if they have that in your area and and uh, some of the channels may not say The Walk TV because they're affiliates but you can find us there and in uh, from 12 to 2 in the morning I have no intention of going past 2 in the morning that is Eastern Time Central Time is going to be what 11 to 1 in the morning and so on and so forth till you get out to California. If we get on this other program, and I and I don't even want to use the word if, but when I'll say when we get on this other network, um, we'll be on DirecTV and a whole lot of other stations. God's just going to expand, expand, expand. Somebody told me I'm not even finished with with doing this, and they told me God spoke to me and said that that you're gonna you're no more gonna get done with all this, and and He's gonna have to give you a bigger place. I'm like. Then he can remodel it. I'm joking. <laughs> I asked him. I said, Lord, I don't want to do another one. I can't do this. Just send the funds or send somebody else to do it. Because I've been working down here um, the last couple weeks, day and night, till late. And then I go home and eat, get a bath, turn around, come in and do this. Get up in the morning. Uh, what, what is it? Um, wash, rinse, and repeat. Wash, rinse, and repeat. That's the way I feel. Okay? just repeating day after day so um, tomorrow I'm planning on taking a little time off because I, I just need a break but anyway you need prayer 727-223-4850 727-223-4850 for prayer please call don't just sit there you, give me a call somebody and if you need prayer off the line off you don't want to go on the air 727-223-4850 Four nine nine four, four. You, the rest of the number, the beginning numbers are on the the, the screen there. They're on there, right? Alea, they are on there, right? Okay. So four nine nine four. Is, that's that's the end numbers. If you want to meet some of this challenge, seven two seven two two three three zero zero six. Hello, sister. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Yeah, now I understand the baby got another tube out, but she's having a lot of withdrawal issues. Yeah, and uh, she was doing good. Mm -hmm. They was going to move her to another floor, but they had to keep her in ICU mm -hmm. where her uh, tube is going into her lungs. Her numbers are way off. Her numbers should be below 60, and mm -hmm. she's at 100. Okay. And that's on her chest and then today was the first time i think that she had ate anything and she's got a lot of pain in her stomach too so with her chest and her stomach they're giving her pain medication mm -hmm. to try and give her comfort um the dad he was tuning in with you tonight to like to have a special prayer for him and for his wife because okay. they've been i remember her name was beth and his name was jackson jackson okay Okay. We really need some prayers for her. I, I'm going to tell you something. Just what you've told me is all good news, actually. If they've already tried to give her food and all of that, they are really pushing forward with that child. I'm, I'm, you know, no, it's not good that she's going through the withdrawals, but, but she's definitely making progress. So that's a lot of it is very good news. Okay. I just I know that because I work in an ICU, and um, so I praise God for that. But I just hate to see her on in pain meds because that can cause some constipation and that can back her up a little bit. So let's pray about all of it, okay? Okay, I appreciate uh, it. In uh, Sharon. Yes. 
Thank you for standing in and interceding for her. I, I just appreciate it because what you're doing right now is intercession. We're, we're coming together to pray. And, you know, if we, I'm learning. if we don't know what to pray for or people don't ask, then it ain't going to happen, is it? No. All right, let's pray. Father, I just ask that you move upon others, Lord, to come before you to ask. Because if they ask not, they have not. And, Lord, I pray for Bailey, baby Riley. I thank you for the progress. But, Lord, we command that digestive tract to work in the name of Jesus. That heart to be new and strong and grow as you created it, Lord. New in the name of Jesus. Father, I rebuke the pain. We command it to go. And, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that we not have to give her these pain meds. But, Lord, tomorrow is a new day a new dawn may you bring her numbers into lord into that perfect place help her to receive and digest this food i ask you just turn this digestive tract back on i know it's hard father for her dad jackson jackson and her mother beth to watch us but lord you got that baby in your hands you're with riley you're with her She's your child. You're with her. And you told us to stand in the gap, to make up the hedge, to pray through. Lord, may these prayers be a wall about her. Satan, we claim her life. You will not take her. In the name of Jesus, I speak life into that little body. I command her to be whole, and I bind the powers of darkness from touching her. I bind the powers of darkness, Lord, from touching the minds, Lord. May they just put on that helmet of salvation and protect their minds from the fiery darts of the evil one that would come and try to steal their faith. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I speak faith and life and healing and that peace that surpasses all understanding in both Jackson and Beth tonight. Lord, may the saints rise up and be a wall about them. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know what comes to me, Sharon, is when the Romans used to fight, they fought ten across and ten deep. They had a hundred soldiers. Now, the soldiers that were on the four sides were the ones that were doing the fighting. But the ones in the middle, they would be standing there until one of the men on the outside either got wounded or, or something happened or got worn out. And so they would switch places. And they were constantly uh -huh. switching places. And they would draw the one that got wounded into the middle of the hundred. And they would be a wall about them and protect them. And sometimes one of their friends would be so close to him, he would be the guy that would wrap their arms, you know, hold him, you know, try to help him or whatever, while the others protected and be a wall. That's what we do as intercessors. We need to be a wall around Jackson and Beth as they bring comfort to this child. We need to be the ones praying in their behalf because their minds and their hearts need to be upon this child. And that's exactly what we're doing. So saints, be praying intercessors be praying and let's be a wall about them as this child heals and we protect this child from the enemy god bless you sister oh, thank you so much pastor thank you. god bless you too thank you so much your prayers mean so much to me well it's it's the combined prayer but it's also sister it's it's the lord that does the healing yes yes glory to god yes love you sister god, keep heart. doing the good work Okay, thank you. All right, bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. Okay, Marilyn's fussing at me already. She's doing it in a loving way. She She's letting me know that nobody's called her, and she hates sitting there doing nothing, okay? She she likes to do her job, and Marilyn takes donations, okay? we We are saving money right now. We are gonna. We we are in a save. We saved money to get on that other station, and I was saving to get on somewhere else. And the Lord says, "No, that's not where you're going." And God made a way that we could go on this other this this network on the first of May for a lot cheaper, and we have the money coming in for that. Now God says, "I want you to go to to this other network." 
it's a lot more money, people. It's as much for one week there as the other place is for, for one month. Okay? It's a lot of money. But I know somebody that has a cattle on a thousand hills. I know somebody, he says, the gold is mine and the silver is mine. I know somebody who owns it all. And he said, he's telling us people, don't worry about it. Give, and I'll give you more. Because when you're good stewards and you're faithful with a little, God will give you more. It's like that sister and brother who, who uh, they were listening one night, and poor Kathy couldn't get her husband. He didn't want to live for the Lord, didn't want to hear no preacher. And she kept watching every night, and he started watching, and, and he got right with the Lord, and they turned to each other, and they had $4.59 in their bank account. That's all they had. And he said, I feel like we should give the whole $4.59. Now maybe that don't sound like a big sacrifice to you, but like the widow with the two mites, that's all they had. So they decided to give that $4.59, and they needed a breakthrough and something. I prayed with them about it. And God, in a few days, sent them a 10,000-fold return. 10,000 fold return on that $4.59. Now try to do the math and try to, to try to think about that number. 10,000 fold. God brought it forth just, just like that. Because they were faithful with a little, God gave them much. Because they, they gave what they had, God gave them even more. Kind of like that little boy. You remember the little boy that had the two fish, the little sack lunch, and the five little loaves of bread? And he said, hey, Jesus, get yours. Or told one of the apostles, and they took, this, this is all we got, little boy sack lunch. I said, that's okay. He says, have the people sit down in groups. I'm going to break the bread. I'm going to pray over it. We'll split it among them. And, you know, I, I'm sure the apostles are thinking, what's he talking about? He's lost his mind again, but let's, you know, let's... Do, Let's just do what he says. But he gives him one last order. He says, and take up the leftovers in baskets. The little boy gives his little lunch. Everybody eats. Over 5,000 men. That did not include women and children. Everybody eats. They take up the basketfuls, and there's five large basketfuls of, of fish and bread. Now, who do you think went home with five, 12 basket loads of fish and bread? The one that gave the sack lunch. And he goes home with it. And he says, Mom, Dad, I want you to meet my 12 friends. Come on in, guys. This is John, and this is Peter, and this is James. Sometimes he, he, he sounds like thunder. Here's Matthew. He was a tax collector, Mom. But he's okay now. He's okay to come in the house. And they loaded up. They left them 12 basketfuls. Can you imagine what Mom and Dad thought? We're going to eat for a while. But that's the way God works. When you give him little, he'll turn it into much. Because you've been faithful with small things. He knows he can give you more, and you'll be faithful in big things. I called a, a, a young lady today. I'm going to call her a young lady. And I said, hey, I need another prayer warrior. The Lord spoke to me and says, you're, you're supposed to be my prayer warrior. I don't think she knew how to answer me. I said, God spoke to me, and I've got verification And I said, you know why I'm calling you? Because you've been faithful to this ministry for over three and a half years. You've been faithful. And you know how I feel about faithfulness. So she's going to be here for a couple nights a week and not here in the building. She's in another state, but we're going to transfer the calls to her for people who want to be prayed for offline. Do you know why Catherine does what she does? I've known her for over 20 years. Faithfulness, faithfulness, faithfulness. Because she's been faithful with the small things, God gave her bigger things and has given even greater things yet to come. 
So, you're not just talking to just anybody. You're talking about a person who has been consistently faithful to God that's going to pray for you. 727-223-4994. You give Catherine a call. And tomorrow night, I'll let you know who it is. So you have to tune in to find out who it is. And God said, there'll be more. There'll be more. So, give me a call. 727-223-4850. That'll get you on. That'll bring you on the set. We'll pray for you. We'll pray for you. Okay? Whatever it is, let me know. You got somebody like Riley in your life. She's in the hospital, been in ICU, CCU, going through... You know, let's pray for him. Let's intercede. That's what God called you to do. Hello, brother. Hello. How are you tonight? Oh, I'm blessed in God. Yeah. How can I pray with you, brother? Um, I've been studying on discipleship. Mm-hmm. And um, I also have a question here for you. Okay. Uh. Am I right when I when you say that uh, pagans are are to, are uh, part of God? We hear in also. I have no idea what you just said, Grant. Pagans well, are what? Are what God are interested in also? That God did what? That I, God I, is interested in pagans also. Why can't I understand what you're saying? That God. Is interested in pagans also. Oh, Lord, I guess so. We were pagans. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just didn't catch what you were saying. That's all but... right. Maybe I was going too fast. Yeah. All right. Uh, and uh, the other thing I need prayer on, I heard about Georgia having a, a beef pro-life problem. I, I didn't catch that either. Who had what? Uh, Georgia. Georgia, okay. Having a beef E. coli problem. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now I understand what you're talking about. Uh, they need, I need one prayer on that. And the disciple mayor also. Who? And the disciple mayor. Disciple, learn to be a disciple. Oh, okay. And uh, the other thing, uh, you know, I'm concerned about... How did Jesus go out and get the disciples? Is it was it the go by two by two? Because that's why I heard he is, how he did it was two by two. No, he called Matthew, and that was just one. Matthew was at a tax collector booth, and he called him. And he just called one. No, he he God had had chosen those his apostles. Okay, he had a lot of disciples, but there was twelve apostles. Uh -huh. And God told him which ones, and he went after them. Yeah. You know, now, I always wonder about some, because like the rich young ruler, he told him to follow him, and he didn't, he, he said, you know, basically he said no. He went away sad, because he, he couldn't do yeah. it. He says, you want to follow me, you're going to have to give up your riches. Yeah. You know, now, I don't think everybody that, that would have had to follow him would have had to give up their riches, except for God knew that in his heart, yeah. his riches were his God. Obviously. So, you know, I, I, I don't think that is necessary a requirement to, to be uh, one of God's disciples, but, but yet there are some people, whatever, you, whatever it is that, that is getting between you and God, he's going to put his finger on it sooner or later. Yeah. And say, um, it's got to go because I'm a jealous God and there is just going to be one God in your life. You know, it, uh, I, I, I tell you a, a story along that line. Um, there was a young lady that was dating Elvis Presley, and uh, uh, she she loved him, and they were supposed to get married, but he went over to Germany with the army, and he meets Priscilla Presley. And when he gets back, um, Elvis says to her, you know, I can't make up my mind. He says, she says, don't worry about it, I already have. I'm out of here, you, you, you know, and the God's the same way. Um, it's 100% him or it's nobody. Yeah. You know, and um, I can't even imagine 
him having the, the, the audacity to do that, but I just happened to know, and she's one of the people that, that um, is very faithful to us, she was a friend of this lady. That lady went on to marry a very famous uh, football player, but they were close friends and they used to go to, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, Graceland to visit Elvis, and then when all this went down, she was like, bye-bye. God's the same way. Um, as far as he's concerned, there's only a, a room enough in your heart for one God, and that's him. Um, so you got to follow him with all your heart. And if there's something in your life that, that shouldn't be there, sin becomes a God to us. Yeah. Money can become a God to us. There's all kinds of things that can. Hmm. Well, then we gotta, we got to get that out of our life. We got to do whatever we can to make that right. So if you want to be his apostle or his disciple, that's what has to happen. But don't think that that because you have something that he's just immediately going to throw you out the door. He's going to he'll work with you. He'll help you with that. That's why he sent his Holy Spirit. Okay. All right. All right. The other thing I was one one I, I just remembered I want to point out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I sometime back in my life I was uh, so close to God that I was in the uh, so into the spirit I was like I was drunk in the spirit. Mm-hmm. I want that kind of closeness back. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna simply say this: Don't seek the experience. Seek the experience giver. Seek God, and it, you'll have that again. Okay. 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 It's like people who seek the Baptist and the Holy Spirit. They're all, I, I have them constantly seeking tongues. I'm like, listen, if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you're going to speak in tongues. There's just no way around that. Yeah. But if you're seeking tongues, you're seeking the wrong thing. Yeah. We seek the gift. Uh -huh. You know, that's just a manifestation. That's just evidence of the gift. That's all okay. that is. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a gift from the gift giver, if I could put it that way. Okay. Um, can I tell you something kind of funny? Okay. Uh, I said one, uh, this was a long time ago, but I still remember it. And I hope Becky ain't listening because I hope she forgets it. Uh, but she, one time I asked her, I says, if somebody we knew had an affair, I says, well, if I ever did that, would you forgive me? She says, sure. Of course, you'd be in the grave, but I'd eventually forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's the mercy God desires for no, us. <laughs> I thought it was cute. <laughs> it did keep me on the straight and narrow. <laughs> I don't even know if she remembers that. Oh, Lord. Hey, let's pray for Georgia, and, and, and I'm going to pray with you too, brother. Okay. Okay, because I know you have a desire to follow him. Yeah, I do. I think it's pretty obvious. You call in every night almost, and, and you just, it's just, it's all over you. Okay. And I, I, Honestly, I appreciate your exuberance, your 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 desire to, to and your honesty when you talk about it. You know um, these different things because I can see you you want everything out of your life. You just want him there. Yes. You know, but sometimes what can I say? Sometimes we get a little confused as to what God wants in our life, don't we? Yeah. So, and I feel like you're you're trying to make sure it, it's. I was a young man, and I loved the Lord dearly. Oh, my gosh. I was saved, loved the Lord, and, and I went with my birthday. Just I was turning, I think, nine years old, so it just got me into youth camp. And um, because it was during youth camp that I, my birthday arrived, so they allowed me to go. And my birthday was going to be on the last night, which was Thursday. And I remember they were teaching on the baptism of the Holy Spirit and talking about it. And every night they had an altar call. And I'm I'm not an easy sell, okay? Mm. And they started talking about this, and I didn't realize really what they were talking about, not knowing that I had been around it my whole life because I was raised in a Pentecostal church. And um, But it just didn't put two and two together at first. And they would give all the scriptures every night for it, and instead of going to the altar, I would take notes and I'd run back to my room and I'd sit on my bunk and I would go through everything they taught that night. 
I wanted to make sure what they were talking about was of God. Well, the fourth night had arrived, the Thursday night uh, of camp, and it was the last altar call that they were going to give because it was our last night. And They got up and preached on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and, and uh, I was convinced this was of God. And I wanted it in my life. I wanted more of God. So I went down and I prayed a very simple prayer. And I don't know if I said it right then, and I may not say it quite right now, but God knew my heart. And I, I just went down and I, I raised my hands. I was standing. And I raised my hands up and I said, Dear God, you know I want all of you. And I want everything you have. And if this is something you want to give me, I want it. But Lord, I'm trusting you right now. I'm just submitting myself to you and I'm trusting you. And I said, if this is of you, your word says that if I asked for a fish, you wouldn't give me a stick. Or if I asked for a piece of bread, you wouldn't give me a stone. So if you want me to have this, then give it to me right now. Mm. And I fell backwards on concrete. Didn't feel it a bit. My hands are still raised in the air. And... I'm telling you, I felt like I had been raptured. I, f I was in the throne room of God with him. I mean, it was the most wonderful, beautiful thing that I had ever experienced. And I spoke in tongues for two and a half hours. They finally made me go to my room. I walked out of the building. I got off the floor. I could barely walk. I was like you, drunk in the spirit. I could yeah. barely walk. I staggered back to the room. And I spoke in tongues all the way to the room. I finally fell asleep. They said I was speaking in tongues in my sleep. My wife says I still do that. There are times when she'll wake up and I'll be praying in the Spirit. And, and I'll be uh, out. And, yeah. and I woke up the next day and I could hardly speak English. And my mother and, and some other people from church showed up. And I believe we were in a van. And I remembered I couldn't wait to tell her. But I was afraid that I couldn't get English out. And I got to tell her that what God had done for me. But the funny part is, brother, I watched my mom pray in tongues all the time. I didn't know that was the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But I wanted to make sure it was of God. So I just said, God, I'm putting, I'm trusting you right now. Because you said you only give us good gifts. So Grant, when you pray, always pray that Lord I'm trusting you you said you'll only give me good gifts give me your good gifts and give your good gifts through me okay, okay. you can't go uh, wrong brother he okay. won't fail you okay one other thing I just remembered yeah uh, you are gonna be on there 9 to 11 on your uh, on the web no I am going to be on okay from Eastern Time, we, we're going to 12 to 2 in the morning. Okay. I will no longer be on. Uh, I, I Am I on at 9 o'clock where you're at? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so you're somewhere kind of in the middle of the country, I take it. Yeah, we're in Texas. Okay. So your time, that would mean it's I'd be on time. 11 till, till um, 1. Yeah, 11 to 1. If you got a one-hour difference, it's 11 to 1. I'm yeah. no longer going to be on on the earth, the same hours is is this uh, starting May first was what next Wednesday is it Let me see, I don't even know. Lord, what is it? Um, May first will put us on Wednesday, right? Yeah, next Wednesday we go from yeah. from um, twelve to to two. Eastern time, which of course for you be at eleven to to one. All right, I'll you're still on be on Facebook. Time. Yeah, I'll still be on. Yeah, if you're on Central Time, you're gonna be. I'll be on eleven to to one. Okay. All right. So, um, but I won't be on the same hours as I am here. I can't. I'm just. I, I'm not gonna do four hours straight. All yeah, right? I understand what you mean. Um, I was doing three and a half at, at CTN. Matter of fact, at one point I actually wanted to do four hours, uh, but it was uh, God. It was too much. It takes yeah. a lot out of you to do this program. 
Well, yeah, I'm sure you can. You're not God, so you, you're a human, you know. <laughs> yeah, thank you for saying that, because I know it. <laughs> can I say thank you, Captain Obvious? I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> my grandfather used to say one hour or, or uh, one hour under the anointing is like eight hours of hard labor on your flesh there's a lot of truth to that it, it yeah, really it, it. it takes its toll on you yeah. it does I, because it's just the flesh cannot stand under the glory of God very long I remember when I used to work three jobs but it, it, it can be rough on you yeah well I feel like that's what I'm doing now still but I'm being a little more careful. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, trust me, I'm being much more careful than I was before, and I'm, I'm watching myself. And, and um, you know, like I said, tomorrow I'll be here tomorrow night. I should be, uh, but I'm planning on taking a little time off tomorrow because I, I got to get some rest. I got to well, get. Well, I, I know that when I when I see you because every time I I go on the computer, I have a pop up. Mm -hmm. that, uh, since I'm subscribed to that YouTube right. on you. It pops up every every time you're going to come on. Yeah, you'll still get that. Okay. All right. All right, brother. Let's pray. Okay. Father Grant and I come together in agreement for the great state of Georgia and the people that are in this state. And Father, I ask, Lord, that you would put to death this virus or, or this E. coli, Lord, this this poisonous thing. Lord, may they find the source. And, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name you'd stop this outbreak across this state. You'd protect these people from it. Your hand would be upon them, Lord, and you'd stop this, this epidemic, if I could put it that way. And, Lord, I pray that you heal those that have ingested this, Lord, and that are sick tonight Amen. and restore their bodies. And, Father, Amen. I pray over my brother, and I pray, Lord, you give us every good gift from above. Amen. And that you continue to pour out your gifts for him, Lord, and use him, Father. Those gifts are not for us. They're for us to give away. And as we're good stewards, Lord, you put us under authority as we submit to authority so that we can touch others' lives. And you give those gifts to us, Lord, to heal, to edify, to build up, Lord, to encourage, and so much more. Lord, may you take Grant to that place and help him to stand before you a faithful man. Amen. In Amen. Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. Bless you. Thank you. You're welcome. Amen. Okay. Now, I just got a little message from uh, uh, Sister Marilyn. If I'm reading this right, I better make sure. I'm getting tired. When I get tired, i got to put my glasses on. You know, I go a lot of the day, I don't ever... I don't even know where my glasses are at. Well, boy, I get tired at night. For some reason, I have trouble focusing a little bit. Um, she said $58 has come in so far. We have a $250 challenge. What that means is, my friends, is that whatever you give this person this week, so far, three days this week, has given $250 a night. She says, if you give a dollar, I'm going to make it too. You give $58, I'm going to make it $116. I'm going to match whatever you give. I'm going to double it up to $250. That's a, that's a giving heart. And I know this person. I'm telling you. This person has got a heart the size of, of I'm going to say Alaska instead of Texas. Sorry, Texans. I don't mean to offend you, but I, I heard the mayor of Alaska said to, to the mayor, uh, I mean the governor of Alaska said to the governor of Tennessee, if you all keep bragging on how big your, your state is and how big everything is Texas is, we're going to split our state in half and there'll be two te uh, uh, states bigger than yours. So this gal has the heart, a heart as big as Alaska, but it's as warm as Texas. So, uh, she she just got put it on her heart says, I know you're supposed to do this, Jeff. And I want to plant a seed. I want to plant a seed, and I want to encourage others to plant a seed into this. And let's let God make it grow. So I'm giving this money. I'm going to double whatever anybody gives up to this amount. And I don't know. She might do it every night this week. I don't know what her plans are. But don't you... It, is that not wonderful? That she's trying to encourage others to be a giver. And you know why? 
because she practices what she preaches. I've seen her help a lot of people out. She practices what she preaches. And she can intercede in a giving way. That's all a part of an intercession. She intercedes in a giving way to make a difference. Maybe you don't think your money is that important. Maybe you think that, that we talk about it too much sometimes. But listen, the money is as important, and I know this now more than ever, <laughs> the money is as important as a prayer because without the money, I can't go to people. Now, no, we don't have a whole lot of people watching yet on, on YouTube and Facebook. I'm a little amazed at how many we have, not the, the night of, the next day. So many people are watching this tomorrow. They'll be watching it. Because it tells me, all right? But the beauty of it is people are going back into previous messages more and more. So all those messages, it's the way we're doing it now, it's kind of like the gift that keeps giving. It's there for future. It's there for people to find later on. I've had somebody join us recently, and they said, I've been going back and listening to sermon after sermon after sermon. So this is a great thing. This is a wonderful thing. And we're going to expand on more of it. I'm trying to get the fellow that, that uh, is my tech man. I want to go on to more venues, okay? And uh, so be praying about that. I don't want to just be on Facebook or YouTube. I want to be on more places to reach more people. Because the church needs to hear and people need to hear. God's already put on my heart to do a whole other program. And I'm looking for people that are going to do it with me. I'm just praying, God, you show me, as I told our brother. The Father showed the Son who was to be his apostles. The Father will show me. And we'll be teaching. And, and uh, I, what I have on my heart is I want to do a, an interactive, through the Bible, kind of a Sunday school type thing where people can call in. We've got this wonderful phone system. They can call in as we're teaching and say, hey, I got a question. I love what you're teaching tonight, or, or, or I know what you're teaching. I don't understand. I got a question, and and uh, I want to see if you can answer it because it's been bugging me about that scripture you're talking about. Because we're going to stick with the scripture or wherever we're at. We're not going to jump all over the place. We want to stick with where we're going to be at. But you need to learn that that scripture. You need to know the Word of God. I, honey, that's where the power is. You got to know that Word of God. But it's got to be taught by the Holy Ghost. So, um, be praying about that too. Be praying God gives me time to do it. All right. So, as I was saying, you can go to 727-223-3006. And Marilyn will be there. Or you can go to my blog. And I've been forgetting to put the talk about the blog. I do a, a do devotional five days a week. And you go to PastorJeffLane.com. You can subscribe to it. I hope you do. I wish you do because we're so close to hitting another, um, uh, how should I say, kind of a landmark in, in uh, uh, numbers. We need to bring on a few more numbers. So hit that point. But um, And then I send out, a lot of people found out where I was at after I left the other place because they got that blog. They kept up with me. And but it's PastorJeffLane.com. Go there and, and uh, um, subscribe to it. But, but you can also go there and hit the donate button if you don't want to talk to somebody. or Maybe you can't get to it tonight, but you can get to it tomorrow. Or you got to make a deposit tomorrow. Whatever it is, whatever reason, you can always go there. You can donate. You can give uh, by debit card, credit card, or whatever. I prefer you use debit cards. I don't like to see people going into debt. But, but however God moves upon you to do it, this is the most secure company. It's the only company of this nature that's never had a, a, a breach. And that's why I chose it. So you can go there, you hit the donate button, and you just fill out the form, fill out everything that's there, and, and then hit um, donate, and it'll go through. So, or you can go to Maryland, and she, she can take care of it, however you want to do it. So that's that's that. But that money, we are set it right now. We are starting to save to get on the new the new program. I got to have X amount of dollars before I can go on. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm sure I'm going to have to pay a month in advance, and that is going to run us. Hang on. Let's see. 
Now, that's, this is just for the one program. This isn't everything. What would it be? 22. This is a rough guesstimate. Uh, divide by... So we're going to need about 19000 a month, roughly, to, to go on that, um, to be on that other network. But it's going to take us everywhere. So that may sound like a lot, but I'm telling you what, it really ain't. Not for what. They're giving me a huge, they're literally cutting it in half discount. So as the funds come in, that's, we, we need that amount. That's where we're heading with this. So it gives you an idea. I'd like to have at least two months in advance so that we have a little cushion because when you start, when a lot of people used to come down to the, the TV station and say, I want to buy time. Okay, you want to buy time. So you got to pay for so many. They'd make them say, uh, uh, I think it was six months they wanted in advance. I said, oh, no, no, when I get on, people will give. I says, no, it don't work that way. It usually takes about one year to get enough givers to give to you to sustain your program. Fortunately, I already have givers that, that follow me. But one year, so so they'd say, you you need six months in advance to cover yourself, at least, if you're going to make it. Oh, no, no, no. That, that people get, no. When I started at CTN, if we got, I'm telling you, an $800 a night, I thought I had, oh my gosh, that was huge. We had nights, we started having nights, we, we went over $10,000, didn't have a lot of them, but we did have a, a, a few of them. But most nights, on average, we averaged about uh, $4,000 a night, on average. That's, we just need a fraction of that. We just need a fraction of that. Our one month budget will probably be about the same as is one week down there. And yet we'll be going to, if we get on both of them, uh, we'll be going to, I don't know, somewhere around 200 and, in um, 30 to 50 stations, not including satellite and everything else. That's a lot of folks. That's a lot of outreach. A lot. So stand with us. Stand in faith with us. St step out. And, and you think, oh, I just, I can just do a little bit. No, you can't. Because whatever you give is not a little bit to me. It's not a little bit to God. Give what you got in your hand. And it doesn't take too many people. Give them what they can to make things happen. It doesn't take very many. So, in one night, God gave me a miracle night. I'm just going to tell you what it was. In one night, in one night, the day that God spoke this to me, we got enough to pay for a half a month. In just that one night, almost a half a month of that. That's a lot of, that's a lot of money. And I felt like God was saying, see, I can do this. And it's in the bank. It's going to stay there until the time comes we need to pay for it. So, please, whatever you can do, because God's going to do greater and bigger things. He's already promised me. And you watch. After May 1st, you watch what happens. It's going to come pouring in because God's going to expand. And if we get where we, we, we get everything taken care of with the two, I'm going to be looking for another network. Am I looking for another satellite? Because God said to take it all over the earth. Because you know what Christ said? He says, when we reach every man, woman, and child on the earth, when the gospel is preached in all the earth, then I'm coming back. I want to go home. I want to be with Jesus. Okay. So, prayer for your life. You be praying about the, that. Let, let's just pray about it, okay? Father, I just lift up that you put us exactly in every station, satellite, venue, everywhere you want us to be, and that all the funds come in. But, Lord, it be for your glory, not for mine, but for you. 
Help us to lift you higher, Jesus, every day, that all men, Lord, may know you. Have your way, Lord. Move upon people, Lord. Remove the chains that have bound the funds from coming in and bring them in, I pray, in Jesus' name. And we thank you for everything that has come in. And may you bless every giver in a mighty and great way, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if you need prayer in your life, and maybe it's financial, now's the time. What's that? I'll tell everybody. Aaliyah is here with me tonight, my, my youngest daughter, because um, the fellow that was supposed to be here had gotten sick. And he's recovering. He's doing real good, by the way. Uh, but she had, she ended up with a sinus infection, ear infection. And I was going to get her some antibiotics, and the Lord told me, no, don't get them. I prayed for her. So don't get them. This was yesterday because God had healed her. And she just wanted to give a praise report just then. God had healed her of the sinus and ear infection. And uh, she was pretty miserable. But I praise God for that. And uh, yes, I, w I don't mind taking antibiotics. I don't want to. I haven't in a long time. But I, I prayed over. And, and uh, when, when my children went to school, all four of them, we got in trouble four times. They're not in trouble, but... but looked at like we were aliens from Mars because they said, okay, who's your doctor? Who's your kid's doctor? We don't have a doctor. What do you mean you don't have a doctor? Who do you take? Where do you take your kids when they get sick? Because we never had to take our kids anywhere. Well, why don't you take, what's wrong with you? That's the thing. Nothing's wrong with us. We just pray and God heals them. So we, we never had a pediatrician. We never had a doctor. You know, it just... Yeah, we'd go get shots or whatever the law requires. We would do that, but we just go to the clinic or something for for that sort of thing. But God just just always healed them, and they looked at us like we were aliens from another planet. And I'm like, you're right. I am an alien. I don't belong here. I belong to another place, and it's heaven. I belong to my Savior, and He's going to bring a new earth and a new heaven. I don't want no part of this earth and heaven anymore because it's just exceedingly evil. He's taking me to a new place. So I'm just an alien and stranger here passing through. So, people, prayer works. And it works in my family. And it works with me. And um, so whatever it is you got, let's take it to the Lord. 727-223-4850. I'm not saying we don't go through our things. God, God's word is very adamant and very clear that you're going to go through things in life, but there'll be a distinction between those who love him and those who are in the world. And he brought a distinction and he healed Aaliyah. Praise God. That gal, she's filled with the Holy Ghost. She prays in tongues. I keep telling her, you're a preacher. you got preach in you. When are you preaching? What night we having you preach? <laughs> one, one night. One night. I, 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 really should, I, I really think she'd do a good job. I think it's in her. She understands. She's amazing. And, and the wisdom to have at 17 years old, um, she gets it. She understands. And she's like us. She sees the world. She, I, I'm telling you, you can talk to her about anything. And you sit there like, I'm talking to an adult. I don't know if I can keep up with this one. Because God has opened her eyes and, and just give her understanding and wisdom. So I praise God for that. Anyway, uh, maybe one night we'll have her on here and she can uh, pray with people. Because she has faith, people. And uh, as my oldest daughter told me one time when God healed her, he said, she says, Daddy... I always heard your stories, and I always heard you talk about being healed, but she says, it's not your God anymore. I always knew him through you. He's my God. I understand. I know him. I know what you were talking about. And uh, I just, you know, you talk about a glory hallelujah time in a, in a father's life. Uh, when she was a child, her and her older brother, or uh, not older brother, her oldest brother, who was younger than her, uh, were playing hide and go seek. And I was in the bedroom praying, and little stinker snuck under the bed to spy on me and I was praying and she come out trembling and crying she says daddy I want what you got can I have that too and I prayed over her God filled her with the Holy Ghost and she began to speak in other tongues 
and the glory of God fell in that bedroom, you want to talk about a wonderful time in the Lord. You lead your children to Christ or you lead them in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's exciting. Daddies, you love your children. Then you need to lead them to the Lord so that it won't be your God. It'll be their God. It won't be just the God of their fathers. It'll be their God of the living and their God. And you can't teach that. You can't give them that. They catch it from you. Let them catch it from you. Let them get the Holy Ghost from you. They'll get what you got. Anybody need prayer for their loved ones? Anybody need prayer for their children? You want them filled with the Holy Ghost? You want them on fire for God? Then you call me. Let's pray together. Honey, that didn't happen by accident. That just didn't. That happened because of prayer. That happened because my mother and my mother-in-law and, and my family were praying for their grandchildren. My mom prays for her children and her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren. every. I don't think a day passes that she don't pray for them. And she's watching some of them that have left the Lord come back. But she don't let go of heaven. She don't. She says, God has shown me every one of them will serve him before they die. And I believe it. I believe it. Some of them are stinkers. But that's how you bring them in. You intercede. You pray. You grab a hold of heaven. I know there's people out there right now, you got kids that aren't serving the Lord. Then get other people to pray with you. How about you call 727-223-4850 and, and let me pray. Or maybe it's sensitive. Maybe it's a situation Sometimes your kids will tell you they're saved, and you know good and well they're not living for the Lord. Maybe you need to call Catherine, because Catherine will grab a hold of heaven. 727-223-4994. 727-223-4994. Call her right now. Say, hey, listen, i got a son or i got a daughter. Maybe they're in drugs. Maybe they're in alcohol. Maybe they're living with somebody. They're they're in a, 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 a sexual relationship they shouldn't be in. Then call one of us and let's pray through. Because if you love them, you're going to pray for them. You're going to seek the Lord in their behalf. So give us a call. 727-223-4850. I don't know where people are tonight. I've only had a couple callers. People, it's going to be a time, and you say, man, I wish I'd have called in. We're just about there. We are close. It's going to be a time, and you say, man, oh, I wish yeah. I'd have called in. I have to listen to myself. I can't stand to listen to myself. <laughs> uh, praise the Lord. Okay, I got somebody here that needs us to pray for their son. Has strep throat. I wish you would call me. I can pray over there, but I'll pray with you right now. It, it, let me see. What does it say? It doesn't say his name. So let's uh, let's pray for this young man because he's starting a new job. And he says he just just uh, recently was born again. Father, I lift up this this new son. Not only Lord, this son of this this person, but Lord, your new son. And I rebuke the strep throat. I rebuke that strep virus in the name of Jesus and command it to die and for him to be healed, that fever to break. And Lord, for it to be gone tonight in the name of Jesus. Wake up in the morning healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Who do I have on the line? This is Ted from Arkansas. I was going to tell you, I like your, uh, your set behind you. I like the brick. Well, thank you, Ted from I Arkansas. I you on Facebook and YouTube. <laughs> yeah. I Becky and I come down here today and uh, uh, built, I don't know how to explain, there's a framework behind here, but we built the framework, we put the mm -hmm. brick on and the trim up, and uh, uh, these bricks we had to, I painted them partially, mm -hmm. uh, because I, I wanted them, I didn't like the brick that was there, and so mm -hmm. she came down here and she did a wonderful job directing every move I made. <laughs> It turned out fabulous. Oh, she, <laughs> see, see what you can do if you listen to your wife, Ted. So, 
<laughs> <It's not. laughs> I don't have one, but okay. <laughs> okay, well, would you like me to pray for you one? or? or? Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm good all right for now. <laughs> all right. All right, well, the Bible says, He who findeth a wife findeth a good thing. <laughs> don't you want a good thing? <laughs> I, I I'm not feeling. I, 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 I I'm not feeling it, Ted. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> wow. The no enthusi- <laughs> Listen, if you do meet a woman, I I recommend a little bit more enthusiasm. Than that. <laughs> well, I guess I'll marry you. Okay, I do. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't gonna work, Ted. It's it's a it's a definite yes or no. <laughs> We are on a public radio here, you know. <laughs> okay, I won't put you on the spot no more. How about we just pray the Lord's will be done in that area? Get a bunch of after me. <laughs> <laughs> We've already got enough of them. <laughs> uh, uh, surely there's somebody in Arkansas that, that you'd have. <laughs> you take care of your mama, though, don't you? All the time, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I understand. Well, I, I, I'll tell you this, Ted. I'll give you a little hope here. We'll just pray about it one of these days. <laughs> okay. I had a, we had a lady in the nursing home, never been married, at 100 years old. Mm-hmm. They, they, one of the chaplains performed her <laughs> wedding. She married, wow. a man, she married a man at the facility, first marriage, 100 years old, and he was 87. Wow. And uh, they said they gave her a nickname. I mean, it was, they called her the cougar. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> I might wait till I'm 100 then. <laughs> they call me the bear. <laughs> uh, oh, well, you know, just, just trying to help you out, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I, I don't I know. I appreciate how, it. Listen, I don't know how men live who are single, because how do you know what to do? I mean, I got somebody tell me what to do all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been cooking about all my life, so I know how to do that. And yeah, I'm still I know what to do. I'm married. I still cook. You know, <laughs> I made dinner tonight. <laughs> um, no, not tonight. Last night. I uh, uh, yeah. Tonight I brought home. Chinese. I, I wanted Chinese. I was on the way home, and I got home late, and <laughs> she had been working. She she wasn't even off work yet, and and uh, so well, we. Well, that was a nice surprise from you. But the last couple of nights, I I've been barbecuing. I had brought worse one night, and pork mm. chops, and wow. and uh, corn on the cob, and the whole works. So. Sounds good. Yep. Yeah. Maybe I should start a cooking show. You know. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. I used to tell them down. We come down here and all the all the uh, test, taste tests and everything. Yeah, I told them at <laughs> CTN. I says you should do an interactive cooking show. You know, if you're going to have a cooking show, you should have people call in and you know be able to talk to you about what you're doing. Maybe give ideas and that sort of thing. And and uh, I could never get them to do that, but I thought it would be kind of nice. You know, you ever yeah. you ever seen one of them cooking programs and they're doing something? You're sitting there like, what are they talking about? You know, mm-hmm. well, you you like to ask questions and you can't. Well, I thought it was a good idea, but they they never got around to it. I thought if you're going to have a cooking show, you, you know, might as well make it where people can ask questions. And uh, I'm not going to do a cooking show, though, brother. No, you know, <laughs> me cooking. Better stick to call to pray. <laughs> yeah, well, I I I I do a lot of cooking. I like to make a lot of kind of fancy things, but my favorite's still the barbecue pit. So, oh yeah. Ain't nothing like it, is there? Oh no. So I've been praying you get the four thousand night, just like you did the other the other one. That way you can put it all into the ministry and I do can't, something good with it. Right now, I wouldn't know what to do with four thousand dollar a night, but I'd give it. A, I'd give it a try. We we would find places that would have us. Um, yeah. But I don't think we're. Quite, well, eventually, you, when you crawl to that point, you'll you'll have to have the four thousand a night to yeah. cover the bills and things. Yeah. Well, let. We'll let him bring it as we need it, cause I, I, sure. I wouldn't even. That's a lot. That's a that works out to about a million dollars a year is what it works out. I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't know. As of right now, I need time <laughs> to find. I'm worried about your banker woman. She knows what to do. <laughs> I would have to find people that 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 knew how to handle it. As a matter of fact, I'm already looking for a, a bookkeeper and CPA, CPA. or whatever. Mm-hmm. 
because yeah. I, I want them to do it because I want to be able to say to everybody, this is what come in, this is where it went, blah, 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 you know. Um, so we're looking for somebody. I've talked to a few, but I haven't got a piece about anybody in particular. But yeah, in time. Yeah, uh, you'll, that'll, that'll come and yeah. in time and all that. Mm-hmm. But I just found out about a new one, let me see, two days ago, and I haven't got to talk to him. So I'm kind of, uh, uh, he's close. So I'm kind of excited about that. I want to, he's just down the street from here. So I, uh, I'm going to go have a talk with him probably next week or, or maybe the week after because I, I got to, we got to take care of this other. And mm-hmm. um, so soon, soon, that's important. You, you want your ducks in a row. You know, I don't want, I want to be above reproach and everything. Absolutely, you yeah. Know. Right now, it's not too hard to be above reproach. There's not a lot to to, to talk about. <laughs> but it is coming in. Praise God. I mean, you know, God's yeah. been bringing it. So, I'm, oh yeah, I'm I'm pleased. So, um, but anyway, Man, when you hit the television every time, you'll be able to get the other ones back out there, and they'll they'll find out where you're at more than what they're, oh, yeah. they're doing now. Yeah, yeah, and it it, it they'll find us. You know, yeah, they'll find us. It'll come. All the other pastors out there get their their support through all their members and things like that. People mm-hmm. that's been watching for a long time, so I'm sure you'll get to re- yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, one you've been having or whatever, <laughs> and new ones. We've paid for everything. We we don't owe anybody, yeah. so that's that's a miracle yeah. already. And, oh yeah. Uh, we've paid for the the television program a month in advance, and and uh, uh, I needed the the other the second month. And I got that, um, so I praise God for that. We, we so it, every once in a while, it's good to have a little bit of a kind of a pledge night, sort of, because mm-hmm. when you're rolling into the bills that you're going to be rolling into, that's mm-hmm. going to take some faith and some pulling and tugging and some hearts out mm-hmm. there to get it done. Mm-hmm. But if we're doing God's will, God will provide. He'll make sure it comes. Oh in. yeah, yeah. And uh, he'd go before. But, Honestly, right now, I would just want some callers calling in. I want to see more people calling in. That's that's what I really desire. Mm-hmm. And um, so I'm just praying that they that we'll get more people calling in and, and go from there. And, I believe uh, it will. Well, I know it will. I know once we hit TV, it's going to be crazy. Yeah. And um, matter of fact, I had a. I can't wait to try it out. Uh, we got this phone system and. We're going to have somebody vetting the calls before they come to me, and I was praying about. It. I was like, Lord, how do I make this thing work? And God gave me a dream last night, and I can't wait to try it because I think I know what I have to do to make it work. And um, it's very complicated, and I'm having a hard time finding people that that know how to. The 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 video end is easy. It's the phone system that's a nightmare. So yeah, it uh, well. You have to train someone up to do it, and mm-hmm. once they learn it all, it'll be real fast and easy. Well, I could train them if I knew what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. <laughs> so, but I think God showed me what to do, so I, I haven't had a chance to pull the other. Um, uh, there's another unit like the one sitting on my desk, and I already got it, um, and I I was going to have this other guy do it. And he says, I just don't know if I can get figure that thing out. And I was praying about it, and what God showed me was very simple. I thought, oh, we'll try that. So mm-hmm. probably before uh, before the weekend sometime, I'm going to put it all together as I what Lord showed me and see what happens. And, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, he's trying to tell me something. Well, God bless well, once you. Once you learn how to thread the needle, then eventually you'll know how to uh, do it several times over with uh, that machine, and before you know it, you'll be a, a pro before you know it, then you can write it all down and, when you mm-hmm. hire someone, then, you know, just mm-hmm. show them how it goes and all the steps to it. Mm-hmm. Amen. Well, God bless you, brother. You have a good day. Yes, sir. You good, too. Night. Have a good night. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. We're going to be going off the air. If if Marilyn, if you can, I think she just did. No, she didn't. Um, if you can, give. let me know where we're at so I can tell these people what's going on. And uh, um, in, I'd like to know before I go off the air, but I want to thank everybody for being with me tonight. 
I want to thank you for praying with me. I want to thank you for listening to the Word. I want to thank those that have given tonight, especially. God bless you for having the, the vision and, and, and that. Hold on, i got one last call here. How you doing, Kath? Good. Just wanted to give a quick praise report. Okay. Um, everybody had uh, prayed for my niece mm -hmm. oh, three, four weeks ago, and we just found out she passed the New York State Bar. Well, praise which the Lord. was awesome because she was the one that was eight months pregnant when she took the exam and had a toddler at home, so it was not an easy feat. <laughs> so we thank the Lord she, that uh, she passed that New York State Bar because that's one of the tougher ones in the country. Uh, one day she's going to look back and say that bar exam was a piece of cake to raising those kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, praise the Lord. That's a good praise report. Thanks, Kat. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, take care. All right. God bless. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you all goodbye tonight. Uh, we only had $58 come in towards that $250. Uh, I hate to leave money on the table, so please call us. Uh, I'm going to be there for about another 12 minutes. God bless you all. I love you. Looking forward to tomorrow night. You might see some more changes tomorrow. I don't know. Well, I said I was going to take off, so I doubt if you'll see anything tomorrow night. But the following night, uh, hopefully you will. You have a good day tomorrow. Goodbye. I am so glad that you joined us tonight. I enjoy praying for people. But from the moment God put this in my heart to do this, He has brought other people alongside of me in agreement to do this thing. My wife Becky got behind me, there was agreement. I felt the power of God each step of the way. And I know that God brought you to us tonight to pray with us, to be in agreement with us, to, to, to have the passion, to see the power of God and God work in other people's lives. Or maybe you called, be tuned in, and you don't even know why you did. But God brought you here for this moment in time. And I want you to write me. I want you to contact me. I want to interact with you. I want to pray for you. I want to get others praying for you. You can go to my blog, PastorJeffLane.com, and you can email me. I read every email. I pray over every single email. You can write us at P.O. Box 23, Palm Harbor, Florida, 34682. And we can pray together. We can seek God together. I'm not saying I have all the answers, but I know who does. But without your help, we can't do it. And I'm giving you an opportunity to hear the word of the Lord, to receive the word of the Lord, and allow it to work in your life. God bless you, and please join us Monday through Friday from 10 to 12 each night as we take the word of the Lord to people and as we pray for people. Be a part of this with me. Thank you.